CNBC article, and uh, this is written uh, in, in kind of the first person, uh, uh, a reporter. And uh, I'm just going to skip all over that and get to the reality here. Uh, over half of Americans earning more than $100,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. This is according to a recent report by Payments and Lending Club. Uh, earning more than $100,000 a year would put you well ahead of the median American household, which brings in $74,780. So assuming you're an individual with dependents, that salary would qualify you as upper class through three different definitions. Um, but if we skip the whole upper class, middle class, all that, we're talking about people making over $100,000 a year that are living paycheck to paycheck. According to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you'd have to earn about $129,000 today to have the same purchasing power that a salary of $100,000 had just a decade ago. So how far your dollar goes depends on cost of living, and George, we say things like cost of living, but then that just assumes it's like, well, this is just what it is. No, you determine your cost of your living. Just because you live in one region of the country or the other doesn't mean that you have no responsibility or no say in your cost of living. And you were just telling me something, oh, uh, gosh. which I want to cite because I think this is a great example. And you said that you were in a little, which I don't know why you do this, but that's not I the know. point. I, you were in a little, uh, little tiff, if you will with uh, someone on social media today and the guy was giving you the business about how in the world can you say that you can live in a New York city on a hundred thousand dollars. And your reply was, yeah, here, I always think of this Mark Twain quote, never argue with an idiot. They will drag you down and beat you with experience. And that is what I do every time I go into the comments section. I know. And, uh, I know. so this I guy, he, I, we posted a clip from my YouTube channel and it was about how, People make $100,000 feel broke, and it's because of debt, and it's because of their lifestyle. And he chirps in going, this guy doesn't understand that there's areas of the country where you can't live on $100,000. And I went, bro, if I didn't have any debt, I could show anyone how to live on hundred grand in New York City. I promise you that. And I did, here's what grinds my gears, Ken. In this article, it says, thanks to a combination of federal, state, and local taxes, along with sky-high cost of living, a $100,000 salary in New York City is worth more like $35,000, smart asset found. I'll show you, smart asset. Here's the deal. You can't include cost of living and just take that out of someone's check. Um, so when it comes down to it, let's say your effective tax rate, effective tax rate, not marginal, what you actually ended up paying, even in New York City, was, you know, 25, 30%, even 35%. That still leaves you with about six grand take home pay. Mm -hmm. Now, New York City rent, of course, it's going to be really high. Now, if you're a single young person, live with roommates. I live with roommates all the way up until I was married. I know it's not fun. I know you'd rather have a beautiful penthouse in New York City on your own. And if you want to own a home, you may not be able to afford a wonderful single, single family home in the best neighborhood right. right now. You might have to get a condo that's 20 minutes further out. But people don't want to make these sacrifices, Ken. And uh, they love to complain about inflation and cost of living. Right. And yes, those are astronomically high. But I truly think the answer is debt, lifestyle, and lifestyle creep. There's no the question about it. The more you make, it. the more you spend. We That's all right. think we can't live without debt. Well, you got to have a car payment. Right. And these student loans, I mean, you can't get rid of these things. Well, and let's, you know what? Let me just throw something out there. I'm not going to go te too deep down this, this, this road. But this article mentions... Tennessee, where we live. I love the state of Tennessee. One of the many reasons I love the state of Tennessee is because they don't tax us on our income. No state income tax. And I just got to point this out. People griping and complaining about the cost of living in New York, and they basically say because Tennessee doesn't tax earned income, a, M a Memphis resident is what they pick, the, the city of Memphis, earning $100,000, takes home $74,000 after federal and state taxes, and uh, because the city's cost of living is 14% below the national average, blah, 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 blah. This feels like it's all this stuff to go, guess what? You can move. You can move. And if you and if you move here, can I just say this? You should maybe vote like we vote because that's why we don't have a state income tax. Don't go voting to have an income tax. And I'm not, I'm not, listen, I know people get nervous. I'm not going to get political on one side of the aisle or the other. I'm just going to tell you. The facts are the facts. You can move or you can change the way you vote. But if you're going to gripe about taxes, there's a pretty clear choice most of the time. So I just get so irritated with all this cost of living and taxes this and taxes that. Well, guess what? You have a say in it. Move. 
And if you move, vote differently and then and then spend differently. There's your three points, George. You can't just make it all about the money. You also got to decide, where do I want to live? Why do I want to live there? What does that mean and to me? And if you want to live there, go make some more money. That's the whole point. But no, they want you to, to give them more money. And so that doesn't work ju- that We way. should just feel entitled to live in New York City for fun, regardless of our income. That's right. an insane take. Sure. I'll call Stacy on the way home today. Hey, babe, we're going to the Upper East Side of Manhattan because I want to. And and now everything's just going to happen. And, and forget the numbers. We just, we're going to gripe about it the entire time. Or, you know, you just can't manifest this stuff. It's 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 mind boggling. I know I'm getting grumpy, but it's just mind boggling to me. I, I love grumpy, Kent. It's my you, favorite. <laughs> you're getting, getting choked emotional up again, again. <laughs> folks. If you're just joining us, George is not emotional today. His voice is coming and going. He doesn't know when it's coming. He doesn't know when it's going. But when there you talk is. for a living, it's just exhausting. It's I don't fun. tell you that much, it's but fun. we have a good time. So here's the deal. What we have to understand is when we started this article, we laid out some data that we have more $100,000 in over earners than ever that are living paycheck to paycheck. And the reality is, is that the more that we make, the more we are tempted to spend. This is the human condition. And so it comes back to something that Dave Ramsey has said for decades. It's not about math. It's about the behavior. It's the person in the mirror. And, and, and when we can get to a point where we go, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice, I'm going to wait a little bit, sacrificing, waiting ends up winning. But when we don't sacrifice, when we don't wait and we say, give me now, I want this now, we make decisions. And before we know it, we have literally painted ourselves into a financial corner where then the only option is massive sacrifice. And massive misery. You've heard the calls on the show. Well, people are going, we got to sell everything. We have to move yeah, yeah. because we're broke. Yeah. And then what is our prescription to them? You know, we say, you're not going to see the inside of a restaurant for two years unless you work there. That's not fun. But the more we make decisions based on what we want now versus what we want long term, the more we get ourselves into trouble. And that's what's going on. It is unconscionable to me that a $100,000 earner is living paycheck to paycheck because in America, you can make changes. You can change where you live. You can change where you work. You can change how you spend. This idea that I've got to have more money and I'm griping and complaining and going, inflation, it's so high and it used to be this and I shouldn't get adjusted my income based on inflation. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your job. No company can pay you commensurate to inflation. It is impossible. They will go out of business, you dolt. So asking for something like that is mind-numbingly stupid. Yeah. It all comes down to delayed gratification. And here's the thing. We can always look back and go, man, in the 1950s, $100,000, that would turn into $20,000. We can't keep looking at the past. Well, you would have been broke in the 1950s, too. Yep. That's the problem. You got to look at reality and go, what can we do next knowing what we know? What can we control? We can control where we live, how much we work, what our income is. That's in our control. 